Welcome back to the Village Green NBTV show on the environment issues, and et cetera, in Newport Beach. We've been gone. Like everything else, we went uh, quiet for a while, but we're back and we are going to do our first show on summer gardening. Here we are <laughs> at Rogers Gardens for one of our sessions. Uh, just a note that while I'll introduce you, Lauren and I are not wearing our masks right now because we are really segregated and we're completely apart from people. If you do come to Rogers, it is face covering, please. So this is Lauren Anderson. And Lauren, what's your Hi. title here? Uh, my name's Lauren. I'm a horticulturalist at Rogers Gardens. All right. Well, so you got a lot of things we're going to talk about as far as what we can do. But for me, I'm into vegetables a lot. Oh, me too. Thank okay, goodness. Good. So <laughs> we're really good. This is the first heat, really hot day we've had. And are there things, say, in the June, July time that we should be doing besides just making sure our gardens have plenty of water? Absolutely. You know, I'm just kind of your last chance for summer to get in a lot of your warm season stuff if you've been a little bit slow. So on we can schedule. still do that. You can get some tomatoes in, preferably smaller types, cherry tomatoes. They'll ripen up faster. Um, now's a good time for corn, squash, pumpkins, things like that. Um, and then your herbs. You can plant fresh herbs as you need them all summer long. Well, great. Do we do need to think about feeding our plants or is this sort of a quiet time or what? Absolutely. Um, this is prime time for food. Anything wants a good feeding right now. Um, anything from your perennial shrubs, things that love your acids, your gardenias, azaleas, camellias will love a good dose of fertilizer right now. And your vegetables, just a, a gentle all-purpose organic vegetable fertilizer for your whole garden and your um, summer annuals too like your Cosmos and your Beneficials, your Miracles. Well, I have to say that I, I really feel sorry for people who do not have gardens right now because, boy, that's the one thing you could do. And there's always something in your garden to do every day. Oh, my gosh, yes. <laughs> there's something yes. to trim or water or <laughs> whatever, repot or whatever. So that was, uh, that, it's been very nice. It's been my real uh, relaxation to get out in the garden. Well, let's talk about some of the things you have here. Are these the specific summer type plants or what? Yes, these are all um, heat loving, warm season annuals. Okay. Um, such as your tuberous dahlias, which to be fair, should be planted well months ago and they'll be in full bloom right now. I just brought them by because they're so pretty. So we've got uh, like your warm season flowering dahlias, okay. your petunias, um, cosmos are a great one for butterflies in the garden and zinnias are one of my personal favorites. They're zinnias. so happy. Uh, exactly. They're just like summer fun. Yeah, they and, always make me smile. <laughs> and they love hot weather. So And, and they're easy to grow. They Man, are. they're easy to grow. And I love to cut them and bring them inside my house for a little, you know, summer dinner party. When I I think petunias, I think sometimes people don't think of petunias, but if you go out to the desert, say the Palm Springs, yeah. uh, you, uh, in, you just see them thriving. So they must there really are, enjoy there that. There are all sorts of different kinds in the same family as petunia that love that hot, dry weather. Absolutely. Right. I see hydrangeas, which I don't think oh, of yes. as a summer plant for some reason. Uh, I they're think a summer bloomer. Oh, they okay. do like shade. I, I set up here today because these blues just look so nice yeah. and cool yeah, on they this do. hot, hot day. And, and you, to get that color, you give them a certain yeah, the hydrangeas like some iron and they do need an acid. So a couple times a year at least give them some acid. And specifically to get this blue color, they've got to build up iron in their soils. So it's something you have to do consistently to so maintain. So is the natural color more pink or? Yeah, naturally they'll fade out to um, ivories and pinks. Absolutely. Okay, let me see. I used to call these elephant ears. I don't know what they're actually called. Elephant ears, that's them, alocasia. Okay. Um, just a nice tropical foliage. I think it has a really cooling effect in a garden, something nice and shady. Well, with you, big that tropical used to be. Leaves. I'm thinking back to like maybe the 50s. It seems like that where you see them all over the place, but you don't see them as, as much. Are they hard to grow? Easy to grow? Oh, no, they're so easy. They're so easy to grow. You just got to give them plenty of water. <laughs> and how is this like, is that a mature plant or do they get higher? Or? Um, you know, this variety, I'm not certain of this, certain of the specifics, but there are types that can get to be three feet across. Um, the Thai giant elephant ear gets gigantic. Oh, okay. They also come in a purple variety and oh. like bright chartreuse green, which well, then, I've got in pretty. my garden. I love those. Do, are they grown from like, a, you buy They are. They're a big or? old bulb, like the size of a coconut. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, and you can purchase those in winter and early spring and plant them in your garden. And then they are a perennial. If you get a lot of uh, chilly weather in winter, they could die back. Um, 
but you know, just some good compost through summer on everything, uh -huh. alocasia, hydrangea, all of your vegetables. That's probably my go-to tip for summer is some slow deep watering and make sure you add a nice thick layer of compost on right now to keep all the roots cool and give everything a little extra food so that it can pump along with this hot weather. All right, you've got something that's uh, sort of a sprawler here. Oh yeah, we've got some mint, just some nice oh, mint. Yeah, heat loving mint herbs. <laughs> And yeah, I mean, mints who doesn't are like love bamboo. something? <laughs> you better contain it. It's yeah, it needs over. to be in a pot by itself, certainly. But I mean, a nice fresh limeade with some mint in it in summer. Uh -huh. Who doesn't love to throw a piece of mint into a oh, fresh yeah. cocktail? Yeah. And then just some lavender, you know, things that like the heat. I like to pick lavenders, chamomiles, mints in my garden, and I steep mm -hmm. them into teas. All right, and we got some beans and tomatoes. You yeah, said those so are these good. are just a few examples of some things that if you haven't planted yet in your garden, is the perfect time. I wouldn't wait another weekend. Beans, cherry tomato. I've got some pumpkin in here somewhere. If you want to carve your own pumpkins for October, <laughs> this is the time to plant them in the ground. And corn. Uh, so um, for, for people who like beans, fresh beans, bush beans versus pole beans, is there any benefits um, oh gosh, to there's so many different varieties. It's really just what you have the available space for. If you have a nice arbor or a wall that you can trellis to grow pole beans, they come up so fast and they get some beautiful little flowers on them. Um, really nice, quick, easy coverage for summer and really great production. Bush beans, they just don't require the staking. So if you don't have a space that you've uh -huh. got for that, you yeah, can I grow them in a nice little bramble. Or pots, they do pretty well or in pots. Or in pots, they do great. But yeah. Peppers do well in pots too. They do. I've become uh, accustomed to growing my peppers in smaller and smaller pots every year, oh, and yeah. they just do really great. Huh. And I find that, you know, the smaller a pot I put them in, the more peppers I seem to get. So <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. We like that arrangement. <laughs> yeah. Right, and you've got some some nourishment here. Or what sort of things do you? This is my favorite compost. Absolutely, is Malibu's best compost. Super rich, all organic. Um, decomposing cow manure from lactating cows. It's just beautiful, beautiful, rich product. I put it on anything in my garden um, at least twice a year. Okay. And uh, this is the fertilizer I use at home, just a simple all purpose. You can put this on just about anything except, you know, some things that like the acid, you'll want to uh -huh. alternate with an acid. Or on roses, lavenders, anything that you're collecting flowers off of this season, I'd use the um, flower and bloom. And then I just brought one of my favorite products too. This time of year, usually we get some June gloom, but we've had a little heat wave yeah. here this week. Um, but a lot of things tend to get a little mildew right here by the coast this time of year when we have the overcast until one o'clock in the afternoon is typical. So this treats for powdery mildew and then just a few common pests like aphids. So it kind of is like a cover for all sorts of sins with beginning gardeners. Uh, it's just really easy to use. Um, so just a couple of my favorite go-tos to keep my garden healthy is what I use at home. So. so watering, I think a lot of us, myself at least, probably don't water correctly. Is it, I mean, yes. we get sort of used to, you see, you see the, the automatic people with lawns and everything, and they go on every day for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. But that, I, I think some, for some things, you really want to do maybe less, but deeper. Uh, absolutely. Um, 12 times a day, I've got people come in here asking me questions about watering cycles and I personally prefer hand watering with a hose. That's what I do. I turn it on the slowest trickle I can get it to flow on and I set it in my garden in a spot like on my blackberry shrub and I let it sit for 45 minutes sometimes and then I'll just move it five feet over and I do my whole garden that way. It takes a couple hours but on your day off if you're relaxing in your garden, having coffee, I like to read my paper out there. Um, you just move the hose around while but, I'm deadheading. You yeah. know, it's just part of the That's garden what I, chores. I, this morning I, yeah. I got up and watered the tomatoes and everything. So I thought, well, it's probably better to do it early, get them. Yeah. Uh, little you know, I mean, sometimes if it's really hot, I'll just go out there and spray everything down just because I'm panicked. Oh, I have to leave for the day and my garden is looking dry and it's 85 degrees. You talk to your but, plants. you know, slow, deep soaking water is the way you want to do it. That's how all plants want to be watered. Um, especially, like I mentioned, if you've got some really great, big established perennial shrubs like camellias, roses, hibiscus, they really want some soaking water right now and the compost is really important for them. It's the difference between having a gorgeous, healthy garden and something that looks like it's kind of always hanging by a thread. So, so uh, a very important question. Do you talk to your plants? 
Oh my gosh, I do. <laughs> and I sing to them. I've got two chickens in my yard. Oh, do you? So we're all just kind of clucking away the whole yeah, time. I, 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 I do too. And I, I was thinking this morning, I came out and because of the wind last night, one of my plants from upstairs, a succulent, was in the alley without his pot. I don't quite know how that happened, but I'm picking up and saying, oh, well, I can't do you right now. I'm gonna put, and I'm thinking the neighbors must think I'm nuts. I'm oh. talking to my little succulent oh, here. Oh, well. <laughs> But they do. I mean, they become sort of like your pets. and uh... You know, they breathe and they drink water, too, and they enjoy sunshine. And as far as I'm concerned, they should probably enjoy some nice music, just like anyone else, right? <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about uh, trees. Yes. So what do you do with your trees in the summer? Uh, leave them alone? Feed them? Water Ooh. them? What? Well, fruit trees, like uh -huh. your stone fruits, again, they're going to want some really deep, happy, slow water at least once a week. Um, keep them nice and moist while they're trying to ripen up their fruits. If they're not getting consistent water at that time, they could be dropping fruit or you're getting things that don't ripen up all uh -huh. the way or they taste strange. So, um, and again, compost on a fruit tree, they just love it. Um, this is a great time of year to plant things like citrus and avocado because they love the hot weather. Okay. Um, and then they want some fertilizer too, absolutely. You need a specialty citrus food for both of those items. All right, let's move yeah. indoors. Okay. Um, because obviously, although not as dramatic, they must be affected by the seasons too. Is there anything in terms of your indoor plants that, that we should be thinking of at this time of year? Yeah, you know, as it heats up um, outside, usually heats up inside. I personally don't have AC, so my either. house gets real hot and I have to water more often than usual. Uh -huh. Sometimes I'll come home from the day and my plants will just be flopped right on over. But you know, they'll pick right back on up. Um, I didn't bring this by, but I use um, a really gentle seaweed extract fertilizer for my indoor plants. It's like less than a 0.01 nitrogen level and that's all it is. It's just some really gentle sea kelp. Um, you can add a few drops of that to every watering that you do in summertime. Because a lot of these house plants are on the tropical side. Uh -huh. They kind of like the heat, but they need extra water and nutrients to make it work for their benefit. So okay. um, um, a little gentle feeding and water. <laughs> so let's talk about some specific pests. Um, white fly, you get that on vegetables a lot. Is, there just, is that just a water spray or an insecticidal soap? Or Ooh. what do you recommend? Um, yeah, you can use an insecticidal soap for white fly. Actually, this three in one spray will treat for that also. Oh, okay. Um, you know, people get a lot of white fly on their hibiscus plants. Oh, yeah. Um, and to but, be but fair. But they like, they like string beans too, or beans. You know, I haven't had that problem really? yet. <laughs> Lucky <laughs> but you. Definitely. Um, you know, adding beneficial insects to your garden is going to help cut back on a lot of those um, pesky populations. So, um, in the evening time, you water your garden, everything's nice and moist. Maybe you've got a package of those praying mantis, cocoons, whatever they're called, uh -huh. uh, the ladybugs and the lacewing combination. Fantastic things. They'll eat things like white fly and your little caterpillars that are munching holes into everything right now. Yes. <laughs> and your aphids. Uh -huh. um, so honestly, beneficial insects are a great way to fight pests without having to be out there spraying all the time. That being said, sometimes a little supplemental spray goes a long way. But are there, because um, I remember the instructions, it seems to me, is, is, is it, don't get your leaves wet. But are there exceptions to that, or is that really, is that an old wives' tale, or, or what? I generally don't want to wet the leaves of your tomato plants specifically. Most of your vegetables, your squashes, cucumbers, all of your cucubriates and solans, want to keep the leaves nice and dry. They will get mildew problems from that. Also roses, too, okay. this time of year. Um, some things, like your ornamental landscape plants, like the elephant ear, uh -huh. they love having wet leaves. They're from a tropical place, and it just kind of give some a little a little juice. <laughs> well Lauren that was a good view of, of summer let's be looking forward when do we start to think about fall is it like next month and say August or do we wait till September October 
because I know that's such a crit critical time. So we're gonna we'll we'll be back here for that. But let's think sure. ahead a bit as far as mark our calendars. When do we start thinking about our fall issues? Well, as far as having things like I mentioned earlier, pumpkins and corn for harvesting for fall, some really like quintessential like autumn kind of feeling things. They need to be planted now so you can harvest them in October. Okay. So um, otherwise planting cool season crops, a lot of these things like um, the broccoli, Brussels sprouts, second rounds of carrots, beets, garlic, and things like that, they can wait till the end of summer. Um, you know, September when it's still kind of warm, but it's starting to move on into cooler weather. And then as soon as we drop down into evenings below 60, you can start doing all sorts of fun, like peas and turnips. I don't know who eats turnips anymore, but I love them. <laughs> Um, I you do know, too. I like turnips. Your yeah. greens and radishes and salads and things like that. Well, okay, mentioning radishes, I, I, it'd be fun to talk about very briefly. There are a lot of people who have never, until now, gardened and particularly not done vegetables and things. Now, I find radishes are foolproof. Oh, yes. Arugula is, is basically foolproof. Um, beans are they're pretty good. Pretty easy. But can yeah. you think of, are there any other things you think that are really easy for people to say, I'm going to do some seeds and I want some results? Oh gosh. Well, from seed, honestly, radish is my favorite vegetable. I grow them as often as I can. I'm sowing new seed almost every other week because I'm picking them all throughout, you know, October uh -huh. through March. I'm eating tons of radish. Um, I love kale. <laughs> I really and love is kale that easy to grow? and Swiss chards. Super easy. Oh, they I can get the little... bigger seeds too, which makes I, yeah, I think it makes the it easy with, to sow. Like your lettuce grows pretty easy, but the seeds are so little it's hard yes. to figure out what you're doing. Also, spinach for cooler weather. Um, you know, if you get it at the right time of year, it's really simple to grow. If you're trying to grow it when it's hot, you're going to have some problems. Though. Yeah, it can bolt right away. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also cilantro. You know, a lot of people think of cilantro as the height of summer, kind of an herb that you want to make into salsas, but it really doesn't love hot weather. No. It seems to bolt immediately. So I start a lot of cilantro early in fall because I'm still picking peppers, tomatoes, tomatillos out of my garden at that time of year, kind of like the last things coming in from summer. And then that's a great time to make some salsas that I can jar up for the rest of the season. All right, well, yeah. I think we've, we've covered a, a good spectrum. Okay. Um, last words of advice. Sure. Oh. Not me, I'm not the expert. <laughs> I mean, I've already said it about eight times. But, but yeah, but no, we, we, I mean, my absolute go-to for summertime gardening is a thick layer of compost and some deep water. You know, everything wants a little food right now and compost will definitely give uh, a little bump of nutrients all over your garden. Oh, I know what I was thinking of. Another good one is parsley because oh, it self-seeds yes. and you can just, it'll... I love parsley, it's my favorite herb. I have it growing in my garden 12 months out of the year and I put it on just about everything. Yeah, and it's another one that you drop some seeds in and it's like a weed. It just... Yes, parsley, super easy to grow, super easy to reseed, fun to cut. Um, sometimes I just stuff a sprig in my mouth just as it is, like a little refresher in the afternoon or it's great on soups, hamburgers, everything. everything. It's yeah. great. Yeah, I, I, I think the having the, the fresh herbs uh, is really good because I was listening to uh, a program with this fellow who's an expert on on, mm -hmm. on cooking with herbs yes. and he was saying most of us don't realize that what we've got on our shelf is probably too old and not getting the maximum but where you right. have the you pick them fresh you know right. you're getting the, the great flavor so and that's it's such another a thing small really little grow. detail to meals that really just makes it feel you know like you put the extra effort in it's nutritious there's a little bit of love involved if you've grown them yourself herbs are so easy to grow even if you can't have a vegetable garden or a cutting flower garden or insect garden you can have a nice big pot of herbs just about anywhere and just have that to add right and i think it makes you more adventurous in your cooking oh Absolutely. i've got some sorrel i don't know yeah. what to do with it but let me throw it try it with this sure so that sure. would be fun so okay we're going to do some herbs too well thank you lauren Thank you, we Nancy. always like to figure out what to do in our gardens, and we now know for summer, heavy watering and mulch. Yes. Those are the big things. <laughs> <To me. Yes. laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, that's our show. Get out in your garden. It's one thing you can do that's you know, peaceful. It's isolating in a way. Uh, above all, keep safe. And until next time, let's all work on making our village green. <laughs>